Hi everyone, thanks so much for watching. In today's video, I am gonna continue on with my decluttering. So I did already do a lip declutter. Hopefully this video is not as long as that one because <laughs> that was so long. My goal today, this is where I store all my makeup if you haven't seen that yet. My goal today is to do my primers. I don't need to do my setting sprays because I only have those three. I've got two up on the desktop, but those ones I'm using right now. And then I'd like to do my foundations and concealers. So that's my goal for this video is to go through primers, foundations, and concealers. And hopefully, I'm sure there's some stuff in there that needs to go. So let's dump it all out. Just as a side note, if you're wondering what spring looks like in Canada, <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> it's it's a winter wonderland. Yeah. So April in Canada, just coming into the Easter weekend, and that's what it looks like here. So let's dump these out. Primers there. Foundations there, and then I've got a couple up here as well, but these ones up here, I don't I don't think we need to go through any of that. That stuff I'm still working on. And then I do have a couple more here and that stuff can all stay as well. So I'm not gonna go through the stuff that's on the desktop because for now it's all gonna stay. Okay, here's what we are working with for primers. Now some of these are easy. I'll pull out the ones I know for sure I'm gonna keep. This is one of my favorites. I got it in a BoxyCharm box. It's from Laura Geller. I've actually used, it's about there. That's what I have left of this product. I love this. This is so incredibly hydrating and my makeup looks better every time I use this. So that was such a surprise to me. I, you know, I haven't tried anything like this from Laura Geller. I think I've tried a couple maybe blush products from this brand, but absolutely love this. So keeping that. I am, of course, keeping the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This is one of my all-time favorite primers. You can see how much I've used. It's so expensive, but if you're looking for something, if you have really, really dry skin and you need something to really amp up your hydration, this one works like none other. Honestly, if I need my makeup to look flawless, this is the one I reach for every single time. So, of course, I'm keeping that. I am also going to keep this one it's from glow recipe it's the watermelon glow nice in my dew drops i love this but my skin is so sensitive that i can't use it every day but this will give an absolutely gorgeous glow to your skin and so if you don't have incredibly sensitive skin like i do this is beautiful, I love it. I did wear it today and was just reminded of how beautiful it is. Sorry, I did, I self tan. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> It's not it's not the best job. I love this product, but I'm only able to wear it once or twice a week. If I if I use it every day, it is irritating to my skin. Um, but having said that, I have incredibly sensitive skin. So if that's not the case for you, you probably would be fine with this. Funny, I use the niacinamide every single evening and have for at least five years. So I'm a bit surprised that I find this irritating, but I do. But I'm going to keep it. I do love it. This is going to go in the garbage. <laughs> Look at this product. Would you put that on your face? Uh, no. <laughs> you know what? It was just a primer that I didn't love and I didn't get to and didn't use it consistently. It When I first got it, it looked just like a, a normal lotion. It certainly didn't look like some weird jelly science experiment and it was fine it just wasn't as hydrating as some of the other ones that i loved and so unfortunately i didn't get to this one from ColourPop, but it was a fine product and there's nothing wrong with it it just wasn't enough for my dry skin but yeah <laughs> it's a little mesmerizing actually because it's kind of all swirly in there throwing that one away i have two here from desium so desium is the company that owns The Ordinary, and under Desium, there's also Hylamide. And this is one of my favorite all-time primers. I actually was just talking about this primer with a girlfriend recently. And this is the High Adhesive Silicone Primer. It's funny because it's called a silicone primer, but it's like a lotion. 
right? So it's just like a really nice, it actually very much reminds me of that Laura Geller product. It's just a nice everyday lotion hydrating primer and I really like it. So I, I went through a whole one of these last year and I ordered another one on backup and I thought, so anyways, I'm keeping that, of course, I love it. So I thought, well, let me try this one from Hylamide. This is the HA Blur, but this one is very silicone-y. And so I don't like it as much. It's fine, but I tend to like a primer that's more, like it has, I, I want something that has more of a moisturizing base and less of a slip base. And this is definitely that slip base and I don't love it as much, but I've used quite a bit of it all the same. I bet you that's probably half gone, that container. So I'm gonna keep it, there's nothing wrong with it. I have this one um, from Touch and Soul. It's the no, no Problem Primer, and you know what? I think you can see I've used some of it, but again, very much like that Hylamide product, this is a very silicone-y, slippy primer, and I don't like it, so I don't reach for it. It does a good job of blurring, and again, it is that slippy silicone base, so if you like that, you probably would really like this one. That's just not for me. That's not my preference. So I'm going to pass that on. I think it's fine. I haven't had it that long, I don't think. Another product from Touch and Soul is this one. And this is the Icy Sherbert Primer. You know, it's very similar to that other one. This is kind of a jelly consistency, but still, again, <laughs> my, my hands are going to be very well primed. Again, it's that slippy silicone primer. Now this one I would say is even more blurring than that um, No Problem one. But again, it's that slippy, hmm, I don't know if I should get rid of this one too. Maybe I'll keep this one just because I haven't had it that long yet. And I would, I mean, you can see I have used it quite a bit, but I could probably get a little bit more use out of it before I potentially pass that one on. So I'm going to keep that one. I've got a couple here from Tarte. I have this one. This might just be a mini of this. I think this is a, a sample size or a mini side. It's the Drink of H2O and it's like a gel based primer and it's just, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. It's just not my favorite texture. I prefer something much more hydrating. I'm um, more like a lotion base. So I'm going to pass that one on because I don't really reach for it. Again, though, it's fine. It's really nice as a primer, but I just, you know, I have to, I have to pass something on. Like, uh, you know, I would probably use it a little bit, but not enough to warrant keeping it. So pass that one on. And then I have this little mini of this Double Duty Beauty Primer, and this is more of a lotion-y base. But again, it is just a mini. Yeah, you can see it's like that thin lotion consistency. I'm gonna pass that one on just because, you know, again, I have so many here. See if somebody could get a little bit of use out of that. And then I have this one and it's the quench one. And again, this is very nice, similar to that other one um, in that it's sort of that gel, you know, the first one I showed you where it's that gel texture. I have so many on here, you can't even see anymore, but it's like a, a light gel texture hydrating primer. And again, it's fine, but I just, I have too many, like some, I just have to get rid of some. And this is just a mini, so I'll pass that one on. I've got three here from Becca, and then I actually even have one up on my desktop that I'm using. I'm gonna keep all, all of these ones from Becca and just try to use them up. The one that I'm using in my project pan, actually I'm very close to being done. So this is the backlight priming filter, and it's got a really nice glow to it. I, ha I think this actually was a mini. Yeah, I think I've used a pretty good amount of it, actually. So I'll keep it and try to use it up. And you can see there just how it's got that little bit of a shift. It's really pretty. So again, you can't, you know, of course you can't get Becca stuff anymore. Well, you can't get this product, I don't think. There are a couple of products that you can still get that's under the Smashbox brand if you were wanting some. But this one, I think, is done. I don't think that's one of the products. I think there's one of their highlighters you can get. Uh, I think you can still get this product. And this is the Under Eye Brightening Corrector. And I think this comes in a few shades. I 
think this maybe is the mini. I can't remember now. But this is a product that you can still get from Becca and it's one of their, their cult classics. And I, do, I use this quite, quite often actually. It just makes my under eyes look more hydrated. And especially on days when maybe I have a little bit extra darkness, it helps sort of get rid of that darkness. That peachy color, you know, color corrects some of that darkness I have. So I do use this product quite a bit. So keeping that. And that goes for this product from Becca too. It's the anti-fatigue under eye and it's just a cooling balm. Again, just hydrating, cooling, really nice. I, re I, I use these together and I use them quite often, uh, but I don't think this is one of the products that you can still get, but that's too bad because it it's a really nice product. Keeping that, I have this from Kaja. This is so old, but I love it. <laughs> and it's the Dream Puff Mousse Primer product. Do you guys remember this? I think it was super viral. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter how careful you try to be with it. You know what? I wish it just was like a normal primer and not gimmicky. And let's see, does it still smell okay? Yeah, it still smells okay. I love this. It's so pretty on the skin. So it's too bad that they don't make this anymore. But I mean, who knows? At this point, I've got, you know, 10 primers on my hand, but... It gives this beautiful glowy under the foundation effect to your skin and it's beautiful. I really like it. And I, again, I do use it quite often, but this was discontinued a while ago. So I'm sure that is long expired. Look at it, it just looks all beat up. I, I think that says 12 months, but I've definitely already had it a couple years. Okay, let's see. Is there anything we're getting rid of? I, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna keep all of these. So this is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I've used a good, a good bit of it. I really like it, but I prefer the Tarte Smoothing Primer. And I did recently grab myself one of those, a mini one in the Sephora sale, and I prefer that to this. They're very similar, very, very similar. So, you know, if you're on a bit of a budget, this is a very good product, very good. But there's something about the Tarte one that I like a little bit more, but I am gonna keep this. And then I have this one from Clarins that's also a smoothing primer. And I don't like this one as much. It just doesn't do as good a job as the e.l.f. one and certainly not as good as the Tarte one, but I'm gonna keep it. It is pretty new to me. And then these three I'm gonna keep as well. This one's new to me. It's from Vesca Beauty and it's a glowy primer and I really like it. It sits nice. I've only used it a couple of times, but it does sit very nice on my skin. And again, just gives me that dewiness under foundation that I really like. So keeping that one. And then this one from Good Molecules is one of my just all time favorite. This silicone free priming um, moisturizer is very much like a lighter version of the Bobbi Brown or similar to the Laura Geller spackle one that I talked about. It's just a really nice hydrating primer if my skin is irritated and I wanna put some makeup on, I know it'll be fine if I put this on. So I really like this product. Okay, and then last but not least, I have this one from NYX. It's the Marshmallow Primer. This one, it is very hydrating. It's very nice, it's like a thick, lotion and so I do like that but I do find that this will disrupt the tint in my sunscreen like even on there I think you can see how it's it doesn't want to soak in like some of my other ones and I have to work a little bit harder with this one I'm gonna keep it it's new to me but it is not my favorite for sure so we'll keep it for now. So that's all the primers I'm gonna keep, still more than you know a single person could use. I just have one face. And then also just worth noting that these are the four that are up on my desktop in my, um, well, this one's new to me. I just got that in the sale. So that one sits up. That's the Tarte Smoothing Primer. Love this product. I just picked it up in the Sephora sale. So it's right now sitting on my desktop. This is in my Project Pan and it is the, Pretty Filter Glassy Skin Balm from Touch and Soul. I love this. You can see how much I've used to that. Just a nice hydrating primer. Um, the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I don't know that I necessarily consider this a primer because it's so versatile, but 
Uh, it is, I do use it as a primer sometimes if I wanna be super, super glowy, love this. That sits up in my Project Pan products. And then this is the last one I have um, from Becca. It's the Velvet Blurring Primer. This is almost, yeah, I, I, I think I've only got a couple of uses left out of this product, but it is very nice. The pump on mine no longer works. It's super gross and gungy, but it's like a peachy, color correcting, blurring primer. It's really nice, actually. I, I quite like it. So I'm trying to use it up in my Shop My Stash products that I have out right now. So there we go. Keeping those products there, passing along those, and that one's going to go in the garbage. Okay, let's work on our... Hi, Bert. Okay, let's work on our foundations. Okay, so these are the foundations and concealers that were in my organizer. And then I have other ones up on my desktop. I'll show you those when I'm done. So I have two of these CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk foundations. I think they're both in the same shade. Yeah, they are. These are so nice. And my son recently did my makeup. If I haven't, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it because it's hilarious. But anyways, <laughs> he did use one of these. And in the video, it had really separated. The problem is we shook it up and now I can't tell which one was kind of separated and which one's still, you know, which one's good and which one should go. They both look perfectly fine here in the tubes. So I don't know. I, I'll keep them for now. Let me, maybe if I smell them, one will smell. No, nope, seems fine. Yeah, they both smell the same. Let's see if we put them on here, if they both are kind of yeah and also they both feel perfectly fine so i will keep them and then just watch them i think one i should probably pass one on but i think one is old and one is newer and i don't know which is which and so i'd hate to pass on something old but i wonder if i have anyone who would wouldn't mind trying it i don't think so i'll, I'll just keep them for now because i don't know what else to do with them <laughs> Okay, and then I have this product from Il Maquillage. So I ordered this to try it. And this is the Flawless Base Foundation. So I'm gonna pass this on. It is brand new. I know it's still good. And maybe somebody who likes, you know, more of a fuller coverage foundation look could get some use out of that. So I'm gonna pass that on. But I am gonna keep this one from Il Maquillage and it is the After Party Next Gen Full Coverage Foundation. It's not something I'm gonna wear every day, but I do feel like it has a place in my collection for days when I maybe want, you know, something that I know is gonna be a little bit more full coverage and have really good staying power. This looks beautiful. It's this, it's this really nice powdery finish on the skin and I quite like it. So I am gonna keep that one. I'm of course gonna keep this one from The Ordinary. It's actually getting, yeah, it's, I, I, next time I order from The Ordinary, I'll order another one because I probably have about a quarter left in here. This The Ordinary has two foundation formulas. I know I've talked this to death, but they have a full coverage foundation that I don't like at all. And then they have this serum foundation. This is my, I, I love this foundation. It's, it's probably my top foundation ever. If you have dry skin, this is so nice. If you have mature skin, if you want, you know, more of a light serum-y coverage, this is beautiful. I absolutely love this product. So yeah, one of my top foundations, keeping that. I'm gonna get rid of this one from ColourPop. It's the Pretty Fresh um, Hyaluronic, is that what it's called? Yeah, Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. I'm gonna pass this on. This is like full. I think I've had it about a year and a half. Is that too long? Let me see, what does it say? I can't see where it says how long you should keep it open for. I'm sure not 18 months. I don't know. I'll, I'll see if somebody wants it, but I might just throw that out. I have had it a long time. I have this one from e.l.f. that I'm gonna just throw out. I probably I probably had this at least two years. Well, maybe I'll see if somebody would like it. So this is just not a foundation that I reach for. So yeah, I actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna throw that out. I've had it a long time. Let's see, I have this one. That's just gonna go in the garbage. It's a little mini. This is the Hydroflex um, from Tarte. And I thought initially when I used this, I really loved it. And then I used it the other day and I didn't as much. So it's almost empty. There's hardly any in there actually. So I'm just gonna throw that out. I have this one from Lawless. I did a whole dedicated video to this. And you know what? If you have dry skin, I just don't think this is for you. 
It's very light and liquidy, and so I thought it would be more of a serum type, but it's a full coverage foundation, and I don't like this. I'm gonna to try to pass this on to somebody. I actually paid a fortune for this because I really wanted to try it. It was sold out on Sephora, so I ordered it right from Lawless, and I had to pay shipping and exchange, and I, it just ended up costing me a fortune, and I've probably worn this five times and I don't at all like this foundation. It just looks terrible on me, so I'm gonna pass that one along. I mean, I, of course, keep this one from Fenty, and it is the Ease Drop, and I love this. It's a beautiful foundation. One of my top five, for sure. Absolutely love it, keeping that. Same with the It CC Cream Foundations. This is the illuminating one. I don't like this as much as the original one, but I wanted to try the illumination formula, and so I grabbed this. Uh, once I've used this up, I'll just go back to the regular one, but for a lot of years, this CC Cream Foundation was all I, all I wore. I wore it for years and years and absolutely love it. It's a great foundation and you know has the added benefit of some SPF of course just added benefit let's not use that as our only SPF but I really like this product it's fantastic I'm gonna keep that these are from Desium which again as I said earlier owns the ordinary and this is from Hylamide it's the photography foundation and this is from Niod which is another you know, company under the Decium umbrella. And this is the Photography Fluid Opacity. I keep these here with my foundations because I use these to mix in with my foundations. They're very similar products. The Niod one is gonna be more expensive than the Hylamide product, but they're like, they're sort of like a bronzy drop. Oh, that's gonna be so much of that product, shoot. Well, I guess you'll get a good feel for what it looks like. Let me just clean this off. So I'll put both of these on here so that so that's the Hylamide product there and then this is the Niod product here. I love both of these and I feel like they're very similar. You can see the Niod one is much thinner and the Hylamide one is very very thick more like a lotion but these are gorgeous mixed in with foundations now this is not I wouldn't use this as foundation I know the hylamide one says it is but I I wouldn't use it like that that's not gonna work for me but what I do is I mix them in with foundations when I want a more summery bronzy dewy look and they're gorgeous like that also great mixed into body lotions if you want something that's gonna give you a little bit more of a bronze look to it when you're going in with your with your you know whatever lotion you use whatever moisturizer on your body but they're fantastic products i did recently see somebody say i think it was jen from jen loves here on youtube i think she said they're closing down hylamide but i went on the decium website and i don't see that anywhere so i'm not sure hopefully they're not but so yeah, I'm gonna keep both those products. I like both of them and I do use them quite a bit. I have this color corrector from e.l.f. I'm gonna keep it. It's probably pretty old and pretty gungy. Oh yeah, little, little hairs and everything in there. But you know what, every once in a while I'll get a pimple or sometimes after Botox I'll get a bruise and I use this to help cover that up. This is new to me, this L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. I've only used it once. It seems really nice, so I'm excited to keep playing with this. It's incredibly creamy. Like, it's the creamiest foundation type product I've ever used. It's lovely, I really, really like it. And I feel like if you have mature dry skin, you may also really like this. I've only used it once, so I don't have all my thoughts on it yet, but yeah, I'm really, I, I enjoyed, the, the day that I used that, I really enjoyed it. And then I have a mini of the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. It's really nice. These are a very similar product, but I do like that. It's just a mini, so I'm gonna keep that. And then last in here for foundations, I have this product from Stila, and it's their Tinted Skin Balm, and I just, I've used it a couple of times. It's not as balmy as I want. Like, it doesn't have much of a slip. Yeah, I don't love it. I was really hoping I would, but I don't. I don't reach for it a ton, but I'm not sure I know anybody who would want this product either. I'm just trying to think. Hmm. I guess I'll keep it. I don't really use it, but 
Again, I'm not sure anybody else that I know would want it either. And then just to show you in my in my shop my stash right now are these three products that I have that I keep up on my desktop that I'm trying to use. I have this one from Milani. I don't love it to be honest. It's it's not my favorite foundation. So I've only used it a couple of times. I'm going to try to keep playing with it and see, but that might be one that I pass on. I have this from KVD. It's the good apple. I used it today actually. And if I go in with the smallest amount, boy, that looks gross in there. <laughs> if I go in with the smallest amount and really, really spread it and shear it out, it's okay. It's not my favorite. It looks kind of heavy on my skin. Like, look at that, you guys, it's so much. But if you, know, if you want a full coverage balm, that's that's probably one for you. For me, I like a very light amount of coverage, so it's just too much for me, but I, I did use it today. I'm trying to get some use out of it. And then I have the Beautiful Skin from Charlotte Tilbury, and again, one of my top five foundations probably of all time. I absolutely love this product. It's beautiful. It's beautiful if you have mature skin. So yeah, loving that one. That one sits out on my desktop. Okay, let's get into some concealers that I have. I have this one from Shop Masse. I'm gonna just throw this out. It's just a potted concealer. My under eyes, the day I used this, I actually did a video using this. I used these together. So I'll link that video, but my under eyes have never looked worse. I looked I looked at least 20 years older under my eyes. So, well, maybe, maybe somebody would like to use it actually. I've only used it once, it is brand new. So I'll pass that on. I have this one from It Cosmetics that I have had I probably have, I've had this four years, easy. Let's see if it's still any good. I got this, it's a little mini. Oh, it won't even come out, you guys. <laughs> well, there it comes. Um, this, I would never use this as concealer for my mature under eye area, but what I do use this for is for covering blemishes. And again, this is just the mini of this. This is, can you see how thick that is? Like it's incredibly thick. So I don't use it under my eyes because that just would really age my under eyes. But I do use it to cover blemishes and it's perfect for that. So I am gonna keep it. Same with this little mini that I have from Pretty Vulgar. I use it um, to cover blemishes and it works really well like that. So it's, I have it there. It's not a under eye concealer for me. It doesn't look good like that, but it does really, really work well as a blemish concealer. So I'm gonna keep it for that. I have this one from Tarte that they accidentally sent me. So I placed an order and they put this in there by mistake. Um, they did fully correct that mistake actually, just in case you're wondering about their customer service. It was fantastic. I called them. I said, look, you sent me this by accident. And then they just immediately sent out the right product. So this is the, of course, iconic shape tape. I am never going to use this. It is brand new. So I'm going to pass that on. I have this concealer from Revlon that I really like. Actually, a, a lovely subscriber recommended this to me and it's wonderful. I really like that one. I'm going to keep it. I have this one from e.l.f. It's nice when I want a light under eye concealer, like something super natural and light looking. I don't like how it dispenses. You click on the bottom and then it goes up onto that little brush tip. I don't love that, but it is nice. I'm gonna keep it. And then also from e.l.f. I have this one and this is the Hydrating Camo Concealer. This for a long time was my only concealer I used and I absolutely loved it. But the last couple of times I've used it, it makes my under eyes look old, probably because my under eyes are getting older. It probably has nothing to do with this product. <laughs> However, I just can't use it anymore. So it's not that old. I'm going to pass it on. And then in my project pan, I have this concealer from Clinique that I love. I have this one from The Ordinary, which is probably my favorite concealer of all time. I have this one from Lancome that I use as foundation just because the shade I picked up was too deep for under my eyes. And it's quite a lot of coverage I find for my under eyes, but I love it as foundation. And then this is new to me. I picked up this one from LYS. It's the triple fix. I've used it probably four or five times at this point. And so far I'm really loving it. I don't think it's going to knock off my ordinary one that I love so much. Like this is just perfection for me, but it is 
it's really nice I'm enjoying it so those sit out on my desktop there you go that's definitely quicker than the lip video we did so let me just show you those are the primers I'm keeping these are the foundations and concealers I'm keeping. These are all the products that sit out on my desktop. I didn't declutter a ton, but I'm gonna pass those products along and those ones I'm just gonna throw out. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, if you would subscribe, that would be amazing. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.